Hello YouTube, we're going to do the valves on this engine. If I can look over, on the exhaust I, it's supposed to be 6 and 10 is the middle in between. So if you pick the number in between off the chart, you'll get exhaust 10, intake 6. I'm looking over at my notes. I can get an 8 in the exhaust, but barely, and I cannot get a 10. It will lift the valve up, actually. You have to shove it in there. Okay, over on the intake, I can get a 6 in there, but I can't get an 8 in there. So, you could be up to a 7 at 7 clearance. I didn't try a 7, I just shoved the 8 over there. So, what we're going to do is, because we're going to lap these valves, even though they look good, we're going to grind the end with our, we're going to use our diamond disc, it's like a disc sander with a diamond wheel. We're going to have it all set up so it's 90 degrees with the blade, so it's all even. Uh, we're going to pull the side cover, pull the cam, pull the tappets out of here, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. See if this will adjust. Let me pause and I'll start recording again. Okay, this might be better. When you start filming on the telemac rope, don't want to switch. Okay, there was a little oil on top of the piston. Here's the head. You can see there's some carbon in the motor. Uh, I've been running premium fuel with a little marble mystery oil. And of course, I always have my uh, sea foam in the gas. So I wanted a little bit of detergent. So I could have ate a little bit of stuff off of this piston. Because if you see there's some block there, it could have ate some of it off and the exhaust. They don't wobble too much. Uh, I can bring them up. There's not a lot of wobble. We're actually rocking the motor. The intake, there's just a little wobble. If I can hold everything still. It's normal to me on an old motor. Okay, the cylinder bore. We'll just spin it around. We'll just keep the camera in there. Looks pretty good. I mean, we got some scuffing. There, ooh, that's a better picture. Get the camera strap out of here. We're doing this on the fly. It is cloudy and miserable. It should not be this dark in the shop today. Okay, there you go. You got a view just about 360 of what the cylinder walls look like. Come around again. Okay, we'll pause. And we'll come back when we get the valves out, springs off, the side cover off, and then we'll show you the valve seats and the valves that they look like. We will wire brush them on the wire brush, so stay tuned. I don't know what part this is. I think it's part three, so hang in there. We'll get we'll get going on this job. Okay, we're still whining about not enough light. We're short a lamp to hang over here. We measured these. I don't know if you can see that swirl pattern. Yeah, I think you can. Compared to this one, I took track of which one they came out of. This one looks a lot more rounder. Okay, this was out of the exhaust. This has about six thousandths or more difference if you measure with my dial calipers, which is not very accurate. And if you try to get out off the edge, which you can't, you know, you got to stay centered here. So I'm going like in the middle of it. There is some wear on this one. This one looks like it's really spun and rubbed. Here, maybe that'll work. See, it looks more abused than the intake one. So I've always just done these motors. I'd put them back in the same. Of course, on camera, that might look about the same. But don't look at the circle part, look at the squared lines. That's why I say, see where it looks squared? You know, actually horizontal lines or whatever lines you'd see. Horizontal, vertical, there, kind of at an angle. Okay, enough of that. Okay, on to the valve seats. Let me pause so we can see if we get the camera repositioned or we'll hold it by hand. Okay, bear with me. Here's the intake. There's the intake valve. And then they don't look really dished in. I mean, I haven't checked what the straight is, but look how scummy the exhaust valve looks and the seat. I let this motor run, run to operating temperature. It probably run like 20, 30 minutes one day, almost nonstop at a high idle. And it started popping once in a while out the exhaust. And of course, once in a while, I was getting pop out of the intake, but it, that kind of went away when I got the carburetor repaired, so. Still trying to pick these up my hand. I'm just trying to go. So shiny that is, baked on. Look how scummy that is. 
if you know what you're looking at, where it seats at. I'm trying to take a better picture of that, so stay tuned. We don't know how much more is going to be on this. If we go fast enough, you will be able to see the whole process here. That's what I'm hoping for, so stay tuned. Okay, we came over here for some more light. Here's the intake cleaned up. Looks pretty good. We're still going to do it. We get, I said I, I tend to get things too close to the camera. I'm sure you can see that good enough there. Okay, here's the exhaust. I can see pitting. Lots of small pits. And it's black. It's not shiny. Uh, just like the seat, it's not clean and shiny like the intake. Of course, it is the exhaust seat. But it will be done. I have a little bit of nastiness on this intake valve hitting like there's some water got in the motor see it but I'm not gonna worry about it it's just an old old engine engine that motor this is all I could get for the compound okay and we'll try to get the part number in here right down in the bottom corner you can take a picture if you want it I found this at O'Reilly's okay what we're gonna do to lap these is we don't have the suction cup so we're gonna take a wooden dowel and we're going to take some hot glue from the glue gun and we're going to glue the wooden dowel on there. We'll give you a clip of me doing the back, you know, you got to spin both ways, back and forth, then up and down. This video is more for people who's done it before. Uh, it's not really an instructional video, but that's what we're going to do. We're just going to glue a piece of wooden dowel on there, let it dry, and we're just going to use that to do our spinny back and forth. You, gotta, you can't go one direction, you got to go back and forth, got to lift up, get stuff in there. Um, I'll show you that on camera real quick. So that's the next step. Oh, and the reason I took the cam and the tappets out is because I don't want anything interfering with this valve getting done. Because, like I said, there was not enough clearance on the exhaust valve. And the intake was right in the middle, but the exhaust was not enough clearance at all. So we don't want anything interfering. Once we get the valves done, lapped, we will put the cam back in it we'll put the side cover back on it we do need to make a side cover gasket but for real quick we'll just put the cam back in it put the cover back on and then adjust the valve by grinding if you have to make more clearance you grind here we'll be up against our grinder sander we'll give you a picture of that we probably won't show it in action because you're kind of nervous doing all that small type stuff but back to work this is going to be too long a video okay Keep apologizing for being dark. Here's my wooden dowel. I put some hot glue on the dowel. I just used my propane torch real quick. Got hot, then I heated the valve up, stuck it on and let it cool. So there you go. That's how we're going to do it. You can just go like this. You lift up. And that's about all I'll show. So that works pretty good. That's my idea of doing it, because I don't want to buy a suction cup. Okay. Stay tuned, we'll get these done and show you what they look like. Okay, we'll just go with the shaky cam. Looks pretty nice. This stuff is a little coarse, but what I did is at the very end I wiped it off, left just a little bit and spun it back and forth with my hands really fast. It kind of made it a little bit shinier. It is kind of uh, gray looking, but it doesn't have to be polished. Shiny, shiny, but there you go. We'll snap a picture of that. We're on to the next one. Okay, I don't know how good that's going to focus, but there's the intake valve. All I did was I popped this off, or I just took a little bit of alcohol, cleaned the glue off. There you go. That'll be the end of this part. I think it's part three. Uh, next time we'll show you adjusting the valve lash clearance uh, by grinding the tip of this off. We'll be using this, the little diamond thing. And we also have a, real quick, use all the stuff for. We have a thing here to keep it at 90 degrees that we clamp on here. we get back so you can see it. So, see you next time. Thanks for watching.